Greetings nerds, it's your boy Michael and in this video I'm going to be sharing with you how I configure my Next.js projects, how I do my file structure, my project structure, so you can reach Chad level status developer. Now if you watch my last video, I'll have a link down below in the description, I went over a product that I'm building called Goshen Pay, and a lot of you are asking me in the DMs, how do I structure my projects? And that's what I'm going to be showing you right now. So we have a standard Next.js project. I don't do the source folder. Source folder, in my humble opinion, is so 2023. We're in 2024. Get with the times. So, <laughs> ah, okay, in all seriousness, I don't do a source folder. Um, I have an app folder, components, lib, utils, um, and that's pretty much it. Everything else is a standard Next.js file. So, in my app folder, uh, obviously using the app router, I have my different routes, like, you know, slash create, slash dashboard, I have my main page uh, file and my layout. You guys know all of all that stuff. Now, the way I do my routes, I will have my route under folder, of course. I have my page.tsx. If it's a different layout, like a dashboard, I'll have a its own layout.tsx. But here's the thing. Every uh, route has its own components folder. And here's the reason why I know everyone puts all their components in the one giant com components folder. In my humble opinion, I think when a code base gets too big, it gets super annoying and super cumbersome. And I truly don't think we need to have a general components folder for a component that's going to be used one time in one route. So instead, I have a components folder for each route that is specific to that route. So for the dashboard route, if you go under this components folder, there are these are components that only this route uses. So it doesn't make sense for me to keep it in the general components route. I also use an underscore in front of the components uh, folder because that makes it a private folder. Um, you could check the Next.js docs regarding that. So I have my dashboard route, I have my page.tsx, and then I have sub routes like settings, price, and finance, and then I have components under. Now, even for the sub routes, like settings, settings has its own components folder because there are components that are only in the settings page. And I don't need to keep this in the dashboard page or in the general components page, because guess what? It only gets used here and it makes debugging and developing so much easier. So if I'm working on the settings page and let's say I'm looking through the components, right? And the church form settings component is broken. All I go is right here and I see the file and it's right there and I can go back and forth. Very simple very easy right so this is what i do i have a components folder a private components folder under every route or sub route if it only is using a component to that specific route if it's a general component for example if you go in my components folder like i have um an auth wrapper right this wraps the whole entire app i have a footer a nav bar so i put these in um, the general components folder. And then you have like the UI folder, which is all the components UI elements from Shad and UI. These are automatically installed. And then a bunch of stuff that I'll just use um, that can be used everywhere. I put in the general components folder, right? So I have my components specific to routes under the route. And I have my general components in, that are used everywhere in a components folder. Now you probably you probably saw these routes, the one with the brackets, and these are called route groups. And they're nothing other than helping you organize routes that might need organization. For example, I have an auth route group, and then I have a sign in route, a sign up route, and user profile route. All these routes are basically authentication routes. So I have these under one auth route group folder, and it just keeps everything clean and organized versus having all these three folders under app. I have this one auth route group, same thing with connect and same thing with marketing. Like let's say I have a marketing page and I want to have multiple of these for SEO purposes. I can have them under one route group and it keeps my code base super clean. And what's cool about these is these are not added within the route. So for example, um, this is slash sign in. It's not slash auth slash sign in. So these are consider them hidden, right? And I use auth groups a lot, especially for very large code bases uh, that I'm developing or working on because it just makes organization so much easier. Now in my utils folder, things get interesting because I have a couple things going on. I have constants, functions, types, actions, and data. Let's start with data. Data is my, the data folder is my data access layer meaning these are uh, functions that are called only on the server and can only be called in either a server component or in an API route. Meaning if I click on one of these, you will see the notation server only. And I've done a video on the difference between use server 
and server only. I'll have that link down below as well. And server only basically means that this function get church can only be called in the server. So in a server component or in an API route, right? So the reason why I have these is I have all my fetch requests, all my uh, data requests in a server only file in my data access layer, meaning the client does not have access to these functions, right? The client cannot call these functions. And what's cool about this is, first of all, I have protection, right? Because I'm fetching data on the server and from the ser from a, within a server component and from the server component, I pass it to the client. And to give you just a quick example of this, okay, so I'm in under the settings folder, page.tsx, again, the repo of this project is down below. Now this is a server component. You know that because there is no use client above. And as you can see, I call the get church a server only function here. I pull the information and then I pass that information into church form settings. If I go to church form settings, church form settings is a client component, right? Notice how I'm not doing my data fetching in the client component. I'm doing my data fetching in the server component and I'm passing it to the client. This is, in my opinion, the safest way to fetch data in Next.js. And this is why I love server components. Server components do not replace client components. Server components make it so that you can fetch data easily and much faster um, and pass it to the client component, right? So that is why I have a data access layer. And the way I call, the where I call these functions essentially is in server components. Now my actions folder contains all my server actions, essentially all my mutations, right? So any updating or any creating or any deleting that is happening within my database happens in my server actions. Now, a lot of people have been burnt with server actions because they didn't think of them as post requests. But if you think of it as a post request, um, a clean and abstracted post request, you'll start to do authentication and checks, right? So I have some auth checks, basically make sure that you are who you say you are and all that type of stuff, right? So I make sure that whoever's trying to access this server action is a user who's supposed to access it. And a simple way I call my server actions is usually in client components, whether it be in an on submit or an on click, you'll always see me using my server actions there. I think it's a great place to do mutations, but always make sure to have security checks, authorization checks. There's much more checks I'm going to do. Um, this code is not production yet, so there's a lot more authorization security checks that I will have to make sure my server actions are protected. And then I have a constants folder for any constants that I want to be able to export and call um, all out through the application. Uh, functions is something I recently added. I noticed that in certain projects, I call, um, I create the same style server action again and again. So I created like a template fetcher function or like a fetcher wrapper that basically does a fetch request, but I don't have to rewrite the same uh, lines of code again and again. And I can show you an example of me calling it, for example, in my delete church server action. All I do is call fetcher function. I pass the route. I pass the data I want to pass the method and a tag if I want to pass. And that's pretty much it. Instead of writing um, all the all this line, all these lines of code again and again and again, all I have to do is just use my fetcher function. And that's what I have under utils. And then last but not least types, I just have my Zod types. I use Zod for my type schemas. I just have all my schemas in the type.ts file. And that is how I structure my Next.js projects code base. If you'd like to dive more into Next.js or check out my starter kit, I will have a video in the cards right above. Make sure to check it out. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.